In this presentation, we will record sales transactions or revenue transactions using a sales journal as opposed to using a general journal. We will be using the data on the left side. These will be the sales that will be taking place in this current month. We will be recording those to the sales journal and that is as opposed to a traditional journal entry where we would have the debit and the credit recorded out and have two line items for each item. Once we do have the sales journal completed as of the end of the month, then we'll go through and we'll do the entire month's worth of information in terms of sales to our general ledger with just one journal entry. And that will simplify the process. We'll then post that information to the general ledger over here. And then that will create the transaction on the trial balance and we'll see how this whole process is taking place. Our goal here is to focus just on those sales transactions. These are going to be normal day-to-day -day transactions that are going to happen throughout uh, the cycle, throughout the month. The idea here being to simplify the process also often done in some type of manual system when we don't want to record the journal entries and maybe we don't have an automatic or automated system in order to do so. If we do have an automated system, it's still good to practice the sales journal because it's often the case that we will want to see this data in a similar format as a sales journal. In other words, we will run reports which will often show sales broken out uh, in a similar fashion, wanting to focus in on those sales transactions. So it's a good idea to look at these. We've taken a look at the normal journal entries for sales in the past. We're going to simplify the process by having just a sales journal. Now the first item here, we're going to have a sales journal as if we're a service company rather than a manufacturing company or a merchandising company. Therefore, not dealing with inventory, having as simple a sales journal as possible. If we have a service, we provide the service, then we can just record the transactions here into our sales journal. And if all the prices uh, are, are listed, we can list out the price and we have the uh, debit and credit recorded here. Note the simplification here being that we just need the date and we and we just need to record the transaction one time one amount in this column this column representing both the debit and the credit side so we just put the one number here represents both the debit and the credit note however we do need the customer as well because we're going to have to record this not only to the general ledger we'll also have to record it to the subsidiary ledger in order to know who pay uh, you know who owes us money the sales journal also is only going to be there not just when sales happen, but uh, when sales on account happen. In other words, only sales on account will re be recorded here. And if we had a sale for cash, even though we had a sale and it is a sales transaction, it is not going to go in the sales journal because we received cash and it would go into the cash receipts journal. That's going to be the most common problem. Uh, that we see uh, when we first learn these journals and that's pretty much because the, the simplification of the name here isn't as uh, specific as it should be. It's really a sales journal on account, a sales journal for uh, accounts receivable. If we got money for that sale at the same point in time, then we would record it in the cash receipts journal. So we're just going to list these out as they happen. So here, if we just had a list of the sales as they happen during the process, the same list is basically going to be over here. We're just going to say if we had a sale happen at 717, it's a service company. We had a sale. We're going to say the service was for P company. That's who we sold to. And the amount is 720. That's all we have to list there. We don't need to list out debits and credits because the debit and credit is listed here. Now, we're going to add these up at the end and then post these uh, to a journal entry, but we may want to post them as they go also to the subsidiary ledger, not the general ledger right now, but the subsidiary ledger, which needs to be broken out by customer. So in this case, the sale was P company. I'm going to scroll over here and I'm going to scroll down to P company. And the subsidiary ledger is going to be down here in our worksheet. It's under these two lines. The accounts receivable subsidiary ledger is right here. And so P company, I'm going to say it's a debit because it's in the accounts receivable. I'm going to do this with a formula. So I'm going to say equals and then go find that number. I'm going to scroll up, scroll to the left. And I know this is uh, hard to you know manipulate around, but it's going to be an E4 and enter. So you could just type in that number, but it's better to use the formula. If you want to just put equals E4, if you're using the same cells, you can do that. I do recommend putting equals and then going through the screen because it's a good practice to work through uh, the Excel sheet. 
Now this is our subsidiary ledger, which is going to add up if we add up our customers uh, and add up everything in the subsidiary ledger, which are going to be these, what is it, one, two, three, four, five customers right now, then it adds up to 720. The reason it's red at this time is because that 720 does not match what is on the trial balance right now. It will after we record all transactions and then the total to our journal entry and post that to the general ledger. So we'll do this process all the way down. The next one is just going to be the same thing, 724, 724. There was another sale that was made. It's a service sale, we're not selling inventory, so, so we could call it fees earned journal, but that's typically, it's typically called the sales journal. And we're going to say this is also to P company, and that was 425. So that's all we have to record. We don't have to record the debits and credits. This row here shows that it is both a debit and a credit. So we're then going to post that not to the general ledger right now, but to the subsidiary ledger again for P company, then post it to the general ledger, all activity for one journal entry for the entire month. So we're going to scroll back over here then, scrolling back down to the P company. We're going to be in cell I or AI uh, 33. We will say equals. We're going to go all the way to the left. I'm just using the arrows now, scrolling all the way up. And we're going to point to that 425 on E5 and then enter. Again, you could come down here to this cell, which is AI33, P company, accounts receivable, subsidiary ledger, and type it in there or type the number or this formula equals E5 and enter. And it should pull over. So now P company owes us 720 plus the 425 or 1145. And that should tie out to what we have down here. So that looks good. I'm going to scroll back up to the next one. Uh, we're just going to record this. Is, they're just normal sales that are happening through the month. Note, we are jumping forward in time. We're only going to have a few sales for the month. It depends on the type of company in terms of how many sales they would have uh, throughout the day. It could be a type of company that makes a lot of sales through the day. And, and that's when this process could be very useful because it will simplify that sales process even with a less uh, computerized system and allow us to then do one journal entry at the end to record all the activity for the day, week, or month. So next transaction is going to be 730 and this is going to be for S Company. These are the people we're selling it to by the way, not very creative names, but S Company, that's, who's, <laughs> that's who we're selling to here. And that's going to be for another 425 and so we're going to put that in our subsidiary ledger. Again, not posting it to the general ledger. We will do that once we sum all these up for the entire month. But posting it to the subsidiary ledger, breaking it out by who owes us money by customer. Scrolling back over, scrolling back down. We're looking for S Company over here. So here's our subsidiary ledger. Here's S Company. We are in AM32. Cell AM32. And within there, I'm going to do this with a formula one more time, or once again, not one more time. And we're going to say equals, and I could, I'm going to do this with the arrows. Now I'm going to scroll all the way to the left, and then we're going to go up with the arrows, and it just keeps on changing the cell reference until I hit enter, until I stop it. So I'm going to go up here, and we're going to go to that 425 in E6, E6, and enter. So you could just type it in here. I'm back here to AM32. You could type it in for S Company Subsidiary Ledger 425, but I recommend a formula either uh, doing it that way, which I, I highly recommend because then you can maneuver around the Excel sheet and see how it works, or type in the formula E equals E6, and that'll pull in that information. Let's see the next one. We're going to scroll. And, and obviously now, once again, the subsidiary ledger is adding up to 1,005. Uh, something and that's going to be the adding of these two summing up to the subsidiary ledger that would be the total accounts receivable red because it's not currently being reflected what is in the accounts receivable account not until we do the final journal entry at the end next transaction is going to be on uh, 730 we're going to say that M company there's another sale M company and that's going to be for 425 as well. Actually, no, this is going to be for 500, 500 for M company. So that's going to be our, our last transaction. Note the dates are going to be different. Again, these are just going to be transactions that are happening throughout, in this case, the month. And we're going to be recording it for this time period. We could do the sales journal 
on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly, depending on the time period that is covered and how often we want to record this uh, and group them up and record it to our uh, general ledger. We're going to post this out, once again, not to the general ledger yet. We will sum it up after this and then do a journal entry posting it to the general ledger, but now posting it to the subsidiary ledger to M Company. So we're scrolling back over, scrolling back down. The subsidiary ledger is down below this red line. We're looking for M Company, so we're going to scroll down. It's going to be here. Here's M Company. We are in cell AM40. AM40. So within AM40, we're going to do a formula to pull that 500 over. Equals. I'm going to scroll left with the arrows now. It's just going to keep changing the cell reference until we stop and we hit enter to where we want it to be. And we're going to scroll over to that 500. So there's the 500. It's in cell E7 and enter. So there we have it. So once again, we could just type it into cell AM40, typing in the 500, bringing that amount over, or we can put equals uh, E7. I do highly recommend using the formulas. So now our accounts receivable subsidiary ledger shows $2,070. That red, because it's not reflecting what is in our uh, ledger in terms of the general ledger or the trial balance, it will hopefully, however, once we uh, do the transaction at the end of the month being the sum of the sales journal. So now we're just going to sum these up. We're going to add them up the 720 plus the 425 plus the 425 plus the 720. The total sales made during this time period. So let's do that. Equals. We're going to use the sum function, most used function, the one we really want to know. SUM and double click that sum function. Highlight the 720 down to the 500 and enter. So that should match at 2070 should match uh, what we have in the subsidiary ledger. We'll double check in a second, but I'm very I'm confident it's gonna it's gonna match. So now what we're gonna do is a journal entry, but journal entry one journal entry instead of uh, however many one two three four journal entries here. And obviously, if we had a lot of sales transactions, this could save a lot of times. Four journal entries would be a debit and credit here, 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 posting that out to the general ledger, making the trial balance each time. Whereas this, then just grouping them all together and posting the transaction as a whole the total amount for the time period, in this case, the month, in one journal entry. So that's the time-saving principle. If you do have an automated system like a scanner or, or if you're putting this into a QuickBooks system or something like that, clearly the system will help make that faster so the journal entries can happen as you go through the process a lot more easily. If you're using a manual system, then a sales journal such as this can save a lot of time. If, however, you are using a automated system, you may want to generate reports similar to the sales journal. So it's, it's useful to understand what a sales journal looks like and have, have the sales listed out such as this. So that you, people could ask for reports saying something like a, like a sales journal and uh, give you that information. And software can basically generate and pull this information and put it into this type of format. So the journal entry is going to be as of the end of the month. So we're in Z5. We're going to say 730 uh, being the date. And we're going to type in the uh, adjusting entry, which is listed here. Accounts receivable is debited. Sales is credited. Why? Because it's our normal type of transaction for a sale. Uh, went on account, the sales on account, meaning we didn't get cash at the point in time of sale. What did we get? We got an IOU and accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is a debit balance account. And we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, another debit. So the debit goes on top. I'm going to copy the accounts receivable in AF6. Paste that in AA5, right click and paste, one, two, three. And that's gonna be for the total amount, that 2,070. So we're gonna say 2,070. Then we're gonna credit something. I'm gonna represent the credit with a negative or bracketed numbers for our purposes and in the credit column here. I'm gonna do that with a little formula by saying negative to flip the sign instead of equals and pointing to that 2,070, that'll take that amount, flip the sign, make it a negative. Then we're going to put the credit here. So the credit then is going to go to some revenue account. In our case, it's going to be called, uh, ju we're just going to call it revenue. And that could be a little confusing because we called it the sales journal, which is typically the name for this type of journal. And it typically uh, is a name using sales as the type of revenue account often used when selling inventory items. Uh, but it's the same kind of, it's a revenue journal, it's an income journal. 
uh, type of journal transaction here. So we're going to say it's the revenue. Revenue has a credit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another credit. So we're going to copy that. Put that up top in AA6. Right click and paste. One, two, three. We could indent this just for formatting purposes by going to the Home tab, Alignment, and Increase Indent. Or just double click on it and spacebar three times. And that's just for the formatting purposes. Okay, so now we're going to post this out. We're going to post this to the general ledger, which will then uh, format the trial balance for us. So the general ledger is over here. This whole thing is going to be the general ledger. Only all it's doing is, is recording these same accounts in the same order. Assets, then liabilities, then equity, then revenue and expenses. So we're going to start off with accounts receivable. That's the second account on the trial balance and therefore the second account in the general ledger. So here's the general ledger where in accounts receivable, the second account, it's going down and then over. So cash, accounts receivable, and so forth. And then we're going to go here to AI16. We're in AI16. Going to use a formula equals, and we'll point to this 2070. And when we hit enter, this will go up. The accounts receivable will go up here, and it'll go up here, and it'll put us out of balance down here. So let's do that enter so it went up here uh, there it is here on the account receivable uh, pulling over from the general ledger and we are of course out of balance down here now we're going to record the second component the revenue component the revenue component is here so it's um, you know it's it's the first dark blue account so it's going to be in the same order when we go to the trial balance or the general ledger we've got the asset accounts we've got the liability accounts we've got the equity accounts and then revenue. So we're going to be way over here in AZ22. We want to be on the credit side. So here's revenue, credit side. We're in AZ22. We're going to do this with a formula. So I'm going to do the equals here in order to just pull this over and then go point to that cell. I'm going to do that with the arrows. So we'll go all the way left. I'm going to go all the way left here. I'm going to scroll up. And we're trying to find that revenue account and that credit of 2070. So it's in AC6. And then enter. So it's pulling over that information. So there it is. Uh, this number is pulling from AC6. And there's the 2000. There's the credit. Uh, you could type it in here with a negative. Or you could uh, just use the formula equals AC6. As long as we're on the same uh, cells and using the exact same formatting. And then that number will then pull over to, of course, the trial balance. There's the trial balance. There's the, the 2070. And uh, we're back in balance here. Here's the net income. Remember that is net income, not loss. It's taking the credit in revenue minus the expenses, the credits winning here uh, by the 2070. Uh, that means that we have net income of the 2070 as we would think because it's the sales journal. We made sales. We earned revenue even though we didn't get the cash yet. Uh, also note at this point in time, we now have the accounts receivable at 2070 and the accounts receivable uh, sub ledger. I mean the accounts receivable general ledger at 2070 and then the accounts receivable sub ledger adding up all of the accounts by customer also lining out to 2070. So when we work with accounts receivable, we have to do this extra step of the subledger listing out who owes us money so we can better handle the collection action and try to collect the, the money that uh, people will owe us. Also note that when using a system like this, the uh, information won't be correct until the end of the time period on our financial statements or our trial balance until we record the journal entries, recording the transactions for the entire time period whether that be day, week, month, in this case, the month.